I'm Rachel Marsden and I'm the Motor Neuron Disease Care Centre Coordinator in Oxford, which means I coordinate the clinic that we hold every Monday, which is a multidisciplinary team clinic. And I help with the patients for uh, research as a research nurse as well. So you recently launched an ALS nursing training program in Turkey. What interested you first to look to that part of the world? Well, I think every year, um, most of the MND care centre coordinators in England, we try to attend the international symposium, which is held in a different country every year. And as part of that, there's a, a an allied professional day, which is really excellent day designed for healthcare professionals where we can share good practice and initiatives and things that we're doing and, and ways we're helping to care for people with MND. And at that day, one of the speakers was asking for volunteers, for people to help with the International Alliance, with a program that they were trying to start, which was where countries that cared for people with MND, they had a board where people could put up a help, kind of help me with whatever, and somebody would match it and say, a country would match and say, I can help, we can try and help. So Professor Joshkin had asked for help with the care for the patients he cared for with motor neuron disease, and myself, and Jan Clark, who is um, a colleague, another care centre coordinator in London at Queen Square, we said we would have a go at helping. So that's really why how it started kind of many years ago in this 2007, and we did an initial visit where we weren't actually sure what they expected of us or how we could help. But we started then with a visit to Istanbul to meet a very small team of nurses. So. You spent a lot of time in that part of the world now over the time of this project. What would you say are the biggest challenges for people with ALS in Turkey? I suppose this is just the difference in the care and the culture, really. In Turkey, there's a different culture, which to different to us. So we have to respect that and the way they do things. We found that they didn't necessarily give patients all the information and they felt that a lot of their destiny, the patients felt a lot of their destiny was in the hands of God. So they therefore didn't really ask a lot of questions and didn't really have a plan or thoughts for the future. They just thought whatever kind of God, God dealt with, they would um, deal with it really. Wow. So how did you begin to overcome some of those challenges? Well, I guess talking with the nurses and explaining about the way we did it, which you know they could take on board if they felt it was appropriate. We certainly couldn't say this is how you have to do something, but we explained that we would see people as a multidisciplinary team. So the doctors, uh, we have nurses, we have occupational therapists, which Actually, they don't have occupational therapists in Turkey. And they also don't have palliative care. So the end of life care is an unusual thing for them as well. But it's working together, really. And we, I, we explained that we saw patients every three months to avoid crises happening. Now, in Istanbul, what was happening when we first visited is patients saw the doctor and they would be told they had motor neuron disease and you know, other, other bits too, but also sent home. And then they would return possibly when they could no longer eat and they were in a crisis and having a big problem. They'd then go to have a peg fitted, you know, a percutaneous endoscopic tube. And because their respiratory function was poor, whilst having the peg, they fairly often had a respiratory arrest and were resuscitated and given a tracheostomy tube at the same time. So some of the patients we met had woken up from a PEG operation, which for us is relatively quick, straightforward 20-minute operation. They woke up from that operation with a tracheostomy in situ and not really knowing what the future held for them. So it's information, really, and planning is the kinds of things we talk to the nurses about. So you spent a lot of time developing a nurse training program there. Could you tell us a little bit about that? 
Well, Jan and I, we looked at each aspect of care for patients and we talked about nutrition care. So we were there for, the, initially, we were there for a week and we talked about nutrition and how to monitor people's nutrition, how when you identify problems, how you might decide to change their consistency of diet and the way they're eating and the consistency of the fluids possibly, how they might need to adapt cutlery, how they need to adapt their cup so they can drink, the position, how to drink safely. So we talked all about those kind of things. So we talked a lot about how you can maintain people's nutrition and the importance of it. And then if it gets more difficult, how to identify when to put a use a peg tube. So we looked at talking about the for, monitoring people's forced vital capacity and thinking and talking to them about a PEG at an earlier stage than they had been doing, possibly before they needed it, but when their respiratory function was, was well and, and healthy, so they could have the PEG and then go home without necessarily having a tracheostomy at the same time. And then we looked at um, respiratory care, and how they could monitor that and the kinds of things you could do to improve their breathing through the night and positioning. We talked about communication and how you know, different types of communication aids they could use. A whole range of everything that we could think of talking about MND, but the, the key things were being um, proactive and establishing a good relationship, a good trusting relationship with the patient where you can suggest and guide people through the journey really and not just leave them to make up their own you know, destiny really. So it's all about improving the quality of life for people yeah. with ALS in Turkey. Totally, and empowering. That Well, the nurses didn't really know what to look for and what they can be, should be advising and the f after the first visit, they decided to make a group between themselves. There, was a, there were about seven nurses initially when we visited and to support themselves. And then they made a list of all the patients that they knew with um, ALS and they made a, a kind of an order and tried to make sure they'd check on if they needed a peg and try to get some routine and, and uh, kind of establish a plan for these patients. But after the first visit that Jan and I went on, we were very concerned that it's very easy to visit and to do a training course for a week and leave. But what happens to those individuals when you do leave? It's not sustainable. And so we thought we needed to do something that would actually make a difference when we weren't there. So the next year, we were fortunate, we were in Birmingham at the Motor Neuron Disease Association uh, conference there, and there was an MP who's quite um, influential in the, with, within the field of motor neuron disease, Lempid OPEC. And Jan and I, um, during a lunchtime, we, we did a pincer movement and to chat to him so he couldn't escape. And um, he'd broken his ankle, actually, so he really couldn't escape. And we <laughs> talked to him about the project that we were doing and what we hoped to achieve. And he immediately, was he was brilliant. He sat down at, at the table and wrote a list of things that he was going to do to help us. One of the, which included talking to the, the ambassadors of Turkey in London and to talking to them. And the other thing was for our Minister of Health to write to the Turkish Minister of Health to see if we could visit them. And he did those. And he took us to the ambassadors, to the embassy. And Jan and I and Lempit spoke to the ambassadors who were very, very keen for us to help um, and care for their patients with MND. The uh, Minister of Health time also wrote to the Turkish Minister of Health asking if Jan and I would be their ambassador, could be their, her ambassador, his ambassador, to care and help influence the care. And we were given a date and a time to go and visit in Ankara the uh, Ministry, the Minister of Health, which we did do. And he was very keen and excited about the project and decided that he was going to set up a similar but maybe slightly different, I don't know how it works in practice, set up to a multidisciplinary team across Turkey and they were establishing, and I can't remember the exact numbers, but kind of 17 or 20 care centres across Istanbul and across Turkey 
where they were also training. Oh, then we went back and we trained the nurses who were the influential people who trained and who were in the universities and taught other nurses and the head senior nurses. We did another program teaching in a similar way to those nurses and then those nurses came back to England and uh, in two groups and spent uh, a week with us training and under advanced course and they spent time in the clinic. We took them to hospice, our hospices, and talked about end of life care and planning and talking about end of life issues. Um, so they learned a lot and they found it um, very helpful, I think. So it's now, I assume, still ongoing and the plan is ultimately, as you said, to create a number of care centers, specialized care centers throughout Turkey? Not just for people with MND, but for the um, neuromuscular disorders. Um, so that was that's their plan, I believe, and they're trying to do that. They're, in the universities, they're trying to now establish a training which will have a certificate to train uh, other nurses to, in care of people with motor neuron disease. And Professor Tolbert and I have written a book about the facts of motor neuron disease and we've got well and there's another book which the university I think have got permission from the Oxford University Press to translate into Turkish so that they can use it as a tool for their patients. Right I'm actually doing I'm hearing that a lot in a lot of different parts of the world people taking books taking the knowledge of what is ALS how do you diagnose ALS you know, how do you care yeah. for ALS and just translating them into languages people can understand to be able to deliver that care. That is that is to what I'm understanding is also another big important factor that really yeah. needs to happen. Because I think I think there are some very simple keys to caring for people with MND is being proactive but listening and communicating well. You know, people can be very frightened of patients with MND, but I think if you can listen to them, take your time and plan in partnership with them and empower them to make their own decisions, I think that's, that's key, probably key to caring for people with MND. Absolutely, and that's really your hope then, thinking, looking forward for people in Turkey, is to, to empower them in that way. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the plan. Great. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for taking the time. No, no, it's a pleasure.